this is an example of the word that was part of the microscope. Okay, so if you think about what we're made up of, we're all made up of atoms, and atoms are really small. If you look at your hand, you can't see the atoms there, can you? Our atomic wave function. The ground state would be the fundamental, the excited state would be the first common. And, and then in the atomic world, it's the same. The electron is just a wave. Uh, my name is Ben Murdin, and I'm a professor of physics at the University of Surrey, and I'm the leader of the project that, demis that produced this exhibit. This shows us um, how electrons in atoms behave like waves on a guitar string, just like a guitar string can be made to do various different motions depending on where you pluck it, so electrons in atoms can be made to oscillate in different modes. Here is a wave on a guitar string where the wave is in two places at once, it's both at the top end of the guitar and the bottom end of the guitar. Just like guitar strings can be made to oscillate in two notes at once playing an octave chord, so electrons orbiting atoms can also be made to oscillate in two states at once. Our research was about how to how to put atoms inside an ordinary computer chip into this two states at once situation. And computers have information inside them in the form of ones or zeros, binary. But our research showed that we can put an atom inside a computer chip into the state where it's both like a one and a zero at the same time. And if you can make uh, lots of these ones and zero atoms all connected, you can have a computer where all possible numbers can be calculated at once. The idea of our quantum computer is it can come up with every single possible computation of a solution at the same time. So if we have a problem with many different outcomes, we can produce every single outcome at the same time, which can then give us our solution immediately. Okay, so there are some questions that if we asked a classical computer, it really would be just quicker for us to do the scientific research, build the quantum computer, and ask the quantum computer and get the solution from that, because a classical computer is not going to give us the solution. So, we have shown before that we can have things that exist in two states at the same time, but never on this scale. It's a wave function that we're looking at, and this wave function is very fragile, and it only exists for a short amount of time. Therefore, we need to be able to protect this wave function. By having a large electronic wave function embedded in silicon, which is what we've got here, we're getting closer to being able to be able to do that. We've also got another part to our stand, which is um, describing what we do at UCL, which is the sort of nanotechnology side of it, the nanoengineering, and how we produce these single atoms onto silicon surfaces. So you think about moving bismuth atoms on a silicon surface. What's that sort of the scale of? is thinking of moving ping pong balls on the surface of the sun while you're on Earth. So if you scale that up, we're, we're talking about something that almost seems completely unfeasible. But we've been able to do it, and the way we do it is using what we call a scanning, a scanning tunneling microscope, which is one of the most powerful microscopes in existence. So what we did was we, we, we did it with just one single atom. So we have a, we, we, the next phase of the research is to do it with two atoms. Yeah to connect them together, but because of the fact that we did it in, in a, just an ordinary microchip, an ordinary silicon chip, we think that we'll be able to easily get from two up to many. Quantum computing has kicked off, it's been, it's been a real driving force in science um, for a couple of decades now. The reason for that is that some pretty clever computer scientists have come up with algorithms that they can use the quantum computer for to produce the solutions. So basically they've already done the programming, they've already said this is what we want to do with our quantum computer, they're basically waiting for us to make it now. And that's why the, the field is so intense at the moment and why people are interested in working out the fundamental science, these fundamental building blocks to create our quantum computer.
when we're going to get our quantum computer, I don't know. People say between 10 and 50 years. I think that's a guess. Who knows? We're, we're working on it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.